We're going to demonstrate the surgical approach for a first metatarsal phalangeal joint fusion, make our incisions starting from the IP joint of the gray toe, extending back to the distal third of the first metatarsal neck. We're going to first identify the extensor hallucis longus tendon, and we're going to come down on the lateral side of that tendon, try to free that up and move it to the lateral side to allow placement of a self-retaining retractor. So we'll elevate the tendon, and sweep underneath this to free up the soft tissues. This then allows us to put a small Wheatlander in place, and then we want to identify the extensor brevis tendon, and once we do that, we can come down to the level of the joint, just medial to the extensor brevis tendon, and open the joint capsule. We'll sweep up over the dorsal aspect of the metatarsal head and sweep up over the medial and lateral aspects of the metatarsal head to free up the capsule and do the same thing on the base of the proximal phalanx going dorsally to release the capsular attachments. And then again from the medial side and the lateral side of the joint. Once these attachments are freed up, we can place our Wheatlander a little bit deeper and then continue to free up the soft tissues to be able to mobilize that joint in order to gain the plantar flexion that we need to place our reamers. You can see here on both sides of the joint, the alignment, we're gonna come over on the lateral side, release the collateral ligaments off of the metatarsal neck, and then release both the collateral ligament as well as the adductor tendon off of the lateral side, and the collateral ligament and the abductor tendon off of the medial side of the proximal phalanx. This allows you to plantar flex the joint and allows good visualization so that we can place our reamers. Once the soft tissues are adequately released, you can clean off any osteophytes that may be present, as well as any synovium that needs to be removed in order to get better exposure to the bone itself. And this can be done with a rongeur. It's helpful to remove some of the dorsal osteophytes and flatten that dorsal cortex of the metatarsal to show you how distal uh, the joint go services go for your preparation. And if there's scarring on the plantar aspect of the joint, an osteotome or a meglamory retractor can be utilized to help gain better plantar flexion. Once the joint surfaces are exposed, we'll take a guide wire from our reamer, place it in the metatarsal head, and drive this centrally up the long axis of the metatarsal. We can then demarcate where the sagittal sulcus is and remove the medial eminence using a sagittal saw. This makes it easier to get the reaming to be completely symmetric with the shaft of the metatarsal. We then take our reamer. We're going to re remove the distal cancellous bone, excuse me, the distal cortical bone down to the level of cancellous bone so that we can get the proper shape of the joint. Once the reaming is completed, we'll take out our guide wire from the metatarsal, and then we're going to plantar flex the toe and introduce the reamer, the guide pin, into the proximal phalanx, and then we will ream over that guide wire to create a symmetric surface on the opposite side of the joint. We'll then complete the reaming, removing the subchondral bone down to the level of cancellous bone. Once these surfaces are prepared, we'll remove the guide wire that we had placed for the reamer, check the reduction of our joint, make sure that the joint surface is symmetric, and then we can place a temporary pin for fixation going from the media from the proximal aspect of the proximal phalanx out distal medially, pull the pin just below the joint surface. We can then reduce the joint, make sure we have it in the appropriate position with 15 degrees of dorsiflexion, 15 degrees of valgus, and then drive that pin back across for temporary fixation. This allows us to hold the joint in the proper position for application of the template. Once we place our template, again, the laser mark goes at the level of the joint. We'll be able to place our guide wire for our CP reamer. 
and this assures that the recess for the CP plate will be in the appropriate position relative to the joint itself. And we'll then over ream that guide wire to create the pocket recess for our CP plate. Once that's completed, we can place the plate across the joint. Make sure that our distal and proximal screw holes are overlying the bone and temporarily hold that with olive wires. Once the plate is in place, we'll go ahead and attach our screws into the first metatarsal. You can use the variable axis drill guide to make sure that we get the screw directed to get maximum purchase on the metatarsal. Check our depth. Place our proximal screw. Then place our second proximal screw in a similar fashion. Again, trying to maximize the purchase on the metatarsal. Check the depth. And then place the appropriate screw. And again, you have the option here of using either locking or non-locking screws as is determined by the need uh, for the surgeon. The CP drill guide is then utilized, and again, this has a variable access to it. We're aiming for the plantar distal aspect of the proximal phalanx, and you want this drill hole to go through the cortical bone on that plantar aspect. When you place your depth gauge in here, you should be able to feel it penetrate the plantar distal cortex of the proximal phalanx, and you want this screw to be a bicortical screw. Again, the CP screw itself is partially threaded to gain compression. The screw will then get introduced into the plate up until it makes contact with the plate. Once it makes contact with the plate, you do want to remove the olive wire. And then as you begin to gain your compression, you have to remove the temporary fixations pin that was placed. Otherwise, it will block penetration of the joint. So once that's placed right at this level, the temporary fixation pin would be removed and then you can get your compression by introducing the CP screw until it tightens. At that point, we would go and place our distal screws, again, making use of the variable access to try to maximize the purchase of the bone by aiming it towards the midline of the bone itself. Use our depth gauge. Get our appropriate screw. The variable axis allows you to direct these screws into the bone without making contact with the CP screw so that we can get adequate fixation. Once the hole is drilled, we check it with the depth gauge. Get the appropriate length screw. and then we've achieved the fixation and the position that we desire.